This is uh, Beach House 7 because it is number 7 that we've done. We're actually on Beach House 9 now. Um, but this was finished uh, late last year. <coughs> so just some stats about the project. Uh, total square meters of the actual build is 826. We did the design um, in four months and the construction period was for 11 months. And it was completed December 2017. Um, as a project, it, it stepped away from our, our existing typology that we had created at the beach because the client actually came and said that he wanted pavilions. He didn't want a house on the beach. He wanted a series of shaded areas um, for occupation. He didn't intend to sleep there. He wanted some rooms for accommodation, but that wasn't um, the 40. So here I've just written, the client wanted a series of low-density pavilions with a conscious celebration of the outdoors. We drew our design inspiration from Ms. van der Rohe's um, Barcelona Pavilion, and this marks a return to our first beach house, which is the Campicara Resort. This project is the most true in being appropriately scaled and a true appreciation of the Lagos beach environment. In addition, our materials and color palettes are warm and mark an intended direction that we want to be known for. So this is the site. Um, it's quite large, it's actually four plots, um, Ilashe, um, sorry, this is actually in Ibeshe, not Ilashe. Four Ibeshe plots, so it's 6,470 square meters. And um, when I first went to the site with the clients, I noticed that he had a lot of palm trees. And I'm an avid fan of not chopping down trees. As much as possible, if we can keep them, keep them. They take too long to grow. And palm trees in particular take a while. Um, before they actually root, take the, but once they're set in the ground, then they grow quickly. So because of that, the concept was really vertical and horizontal planes, the palm trees being the vertical, and whatever intervention we we're going to place in being the horizontal. Um, of all the smaller pavilion buildings, we had, a, or we have a clubhouse, and this was the first 3D uh, visuals of it. I have to say, actually, the good thing about this client is he did not impose too much in terms of the actual aesthetic. Um, and he did, when he did want to make changes, he did revert to us. And it was nice to know that he actually valued our opinion and stood by it. So this is a section looking through that building. Um, so basically, we just have a small enclosed area on the left-hand side. And then we have this shaded area, which is completely open. I remember when we were with the structural engineers, our <coughs> columns are 150 by 600. And they were like, why are they so thin? I said, because I want them to appear to disappear. This is about planes. Uh, this is a section through the other direction, which shows a clubhouse and shows the convenience building um, at the back. So, series of small pavilion buildings. Um, we have a services building at the back, we have the main clubhouse. We have a series of chalets and breakout areas because he also let us know that if he had large parties of people, he wanted to have spaces that different groups could um, have interaction without stepping on each other's toes. So it was important that they would be um, separated. And when um, we went to the site, I asked him to get someone to do a survey to mark out every single tree on the site so that we would make sure that we're planning appropriately and we're not going to take anything down. So you can see that red line was because that's the only tree that had to go. Um, I wanted it further back, but he was very insistent on that position. And this is a view from the top as a completed project. Um, this was actually sent to me by his friend who had a drone, and I was very excited. Um, I'd never seen it from the top. Um, you can see at the very top here we have um, solar panels. Um, because it's at the beach, there is no power at Silasia currently, um, although Lagos State is actually putting provision in at the moment. Um, we do have a generator in the back building here, but this property can actually, for, for the lights, uh, for the music system, it can run completely independent of any generator while you're there. So you don't get that humming sound, which you do for a lot of the other houses. Um, for the clubhouse building, very simple. This changed very slightly. The kitchen building stayed here. Originally, we had put toilets in this area, but he had advised to have them moved, so that got put in an outhouse. And then we have a cantilever concrete table that comes out of the wall, seating area, pool, and we have um, um, lounges in this area, and we have an alfresco shower at the end. And that's the building completed. Um, it's a very simple structure, but um, I'm very happy, in particular with the details, which I'm going to be sharing with you today. Um, it does take 
quite a bit to make things look seamless. Um, but when they look seamless, they're beautiful. I am not a fan of visible services, personally. I don't think that they should be seen. We know that buildings need to function properly, but as much as possible, if they can be discreetly hidden, um, that's our aesthetic preference. It's a view of um, the bar area. And so going into the details. So this shows the clubhouse from another view and um, the pergola that we had um, put in. Now, what's very interesting is that we designed an upstand here, but uh, the project manager decided to embed it. <laughs> um, and I've told the client that, you know, when this wood soaks, I will not be held responsible. And I had to send an email. Um, it was decided without our consent. Um, I don't know how they thought this made sense. <laughs> But I guess those are the things that happen with clients. Um, what's also quite interesting is, um, uh, maybe it's not very <coughs> obvious here, but I remember at a point we were getting costing done, and we have um, a downstand and an upstand beam to give that illusion of the plane. And the client calls me and says, why do we need this cement board? It's so expensive. And I said, well, it's part of the design. If we take it out now, you're not going to have the same building. And with a bit of back and forth, he eventually agreed. Um, everybody who has built at the beach or is familiar with moisture and water content or being near the sea, you know, you, know you can't use POP. It's ch slightly cheaper than cement, but not that much. But um, if you really want to do it properly, you have to use appropriate materials. And I think also because this is number seven, we've learned a lot of lessons from other projects where we've learned things not to do at the beach and things that do last. And at the end of the day, the most important thing with doing any form of beach Construction is uh, designing for low maintenance, but sustainable materials that will last. So this is um, showing the pool. We have a small section at the front, which um, can be used for children. Um, this is about 50 mm below the water line. So, I mean, if someone is going to jump across, you will see them. Um, but we also went with a very clean color palette here. We've used an epoxy paint in the pool, so you get that beautiful aquatic um, color that comes as a reflection of the sky. Um, so we've also deviated away from using colored pool tiles. I think this gives a, a much nicer calmness, actually, um, when you're at the space. These are sectional views um, through the pool. Uh, that's showing that children's area that I mentioned earlier. And then now showing the detail around the tiling of the pool, uh, where we have, a, um, we have um, two slabs of granite, so we get a nice little um, um, overhang gap. Um, also, we have um, composite panels at the other end of the pool, which are quite important for the alfresco shower because we didn't want to see a drain point. So we have a gap where you have the drain, uh, the water drains down. But it's 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 so beautiful. I mean, we could have decided to have just tiled this area. You know, this actually took a lot because we couldn't actually set the level until we had everything on site. So in principle, it was a good idea. But if during execution, um, it had been approached slightly lazy, it, it wouldn't have come out as as nice as this. I did not like this mosaic tile. This was my client. Um, these things happen. Initially, he, had, <laughs> he used a very ugly electric blue. I've actually photoshopped it out. I have desaturated it. Because <laughs> I was so insistent that he changes it to a, a, a gray, and he was like, no, he likes it. So, um, and this shows the details of the alfresco, so you can see the gray um, that goes through the slab at the other end. And I particularly like this, um, the bathroom area. So we have a cantilever um, at the top, and then we have this kind of floating uh, mirrors. And at a point, I remember him asking me, um, how are you going to achieve this? I said, well, I don't have a clue. Um, and I said, oh, do you have an aluminum guy that we can work with? So he sent someone to our office, and I explained to the guy what I wanted. And the first prototype he brought, he brought some chunky aluminum with some rubber. And I was like, this is not going to work. And I shouted at him, and he went away. And he didn't come back, actually. <laughs> but he went to see the client with this, this option. And then the client called me, and he goes, oh, it's fine. He's he got it. I'm like, no, but he hasn't shown me. And he goes, no, 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 you'll be fine. And when he sent me the first image of this on site, I was, I was really happy because we wanted to create this light feeling. Um, the fact that you would have this mirror that kind of becomes invisible. We also had to know because that side is actually um, south, not to mirror the other side. So you don't get, um, you don't blind people. So we used like a, um, a matte aluminium on the other side, but you still get that kind of invisible feel. And again, <coughs> conscious of materials, we have really long uh, concrete uh, sink. Um, that runs from the men's the, um, to the women's area, and then we used um, um, high chrome, I'm sorry, high um, 
high quality stainless steel taps as well, um, because obviously we're in the outdoors. And that shows the details of the sink area um, and the mirror as well. And we have this dwarf wall and we have um, bougainvillea plants that fit in between. So, you know, it's, it's this conscious effort to, to build um, a building that is about celebrating the outdoors. And then we have um, the mural. Now, and, and the wisdom of, 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 of practicing for a while teaches you that sometimes you don't hit a client directly and keep telling him what you, what you want, what you want. We had designed this building initially to have a mural. And then I started telling him slowly that, oh, you know, you might have to put aside about two million for that. And my client had deep pockets, but he's also very shrewd. And I realized that he's an Ijebu man, <laughs> and he just doesn't believe in wasting money. And I could see that he was going to eventually um, say, just paint it a plain color. And I said to him, okay, you know, let's give someone an opportunity. Why don't we have a design competition where we um, invite a series of young artists to all submit proposals, and then he gets to pick one. He will pay an honorarium that will not be as high as a commission to a well-established artist. I get my... Um, mural and he gets it at a fraction of the price and everyone is happy because that's how we designed the building and that's what we did and we had somebody win and he he paid for it to be um installed um, we were very pedantic about the color scheme because we wanted everything to tie in with what the furniture we had picked as well so um this was what uh, we 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 put out when we were putting out the uh competition, but this was part of the brief. Yumika, who is in the audience, um, happily put this together. Wave your hand. <laughs> um, and then this is now starting to look at the furniture. We, I mean, we spec everything on this down to the furniture. These are made in Nigeria, plastic chairs. Um, a lot of the other furniture was actually um, brought in and procured, showing the detailing or the layout of the furniture, um, and then sp the specification of the color schemes that were used um, for the clubhouse as well. Um, we had everything pre-planned and structured and everything was specced accordingly. And this is um, an overview of the site. And it's just really nice to uh, see your building finished. Thank you very much. Thank you.